The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Kraft's parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Don't delay my parquet today. You will say hooray for Kraft's parquet. Parquet, parquet. Parquet margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's wonderful. <laughs> Now, let's see what Gildersleeve is up to. Well, thanks for the lift, Judge. Big help. I was a little late. Thanks very much. Be seeing you. Oh, Gildy. Yes? You happen to know whether I left my rubbers at your house yesterday? Rubbers? No, I don't, Judge. But if they turn up, I'll let you know. Well, thanks a lot. I believe I'll just run in and ask Bertie if you don't mind. What do you want your rubbers now for, Judge? It isn't raining. I'd just like to locate them. I told you, if they turn up, I'll let you know. You don't mind if I come in and ask? No, no, come ahead. Of course, if I'm not welcome. No, no, you drove me home, Horace. Come ahead. Oh, Bertie! Shh, quiet, Judge. There's a lesson going on. I didn't make a sound. That's it, Miss Gilfrey. Shh! How can Miss Piper teach Bertie with people shouting all over the place? Hi, Mr. Gillsleeve. I thought I heard you holler. Good evening, Judge. Good evening, Bertie. Uh, did the judge leave his rubbers here, Bertie? Was that the judge's? <laughs> I thought they must belong to some friend of Leroy. I knew they were here. Here you are, Judge. I'm ever so much obliged to you, Bertie. I wouldn't want to lose these, even though they have been patched. You're welcome, Judge. Leave them here any time. Yes, you're welcome, Horace. Well, I knew that I'd left them here because I recall saying to Mrs. Fogel yesterday, as I departed, I said, I believe I'll wear my rubbers. Yeah, well, never mind about that now, Judge. The rubbers have been found. Well, I'm just telling you what I said to Mrs. Fogel. I know, I know. Okay, Miss Piper, so long. Oh, and Leroy, you'd better work on the sonatina a little. That was really... Okay. Hi, Unc. Hi, Judge. Leroy, when Miss Piper tells you something, you should listen. I did. What did she just tell you? Work on the sonatina. It, all right, see that you do. I will. Uh, just a minute. Where do you think you're going? Out. All right, go ahead. For corn's sake. Well, Judge, you've got your rubber, so, well, lesson over for today. Oh, hello. Judge, you, uh, you know Miss Piper. I believe I've had that pleasure, yes. Good afternoon, Judge Hooker. The uh, judge forgot his rubbers. But he's got them now. <laughs> I was just thinking that I might offer to drive Miss Piper home. My car's right out in front. Oh, no. Uh, she'd rather walk. Well, it would be no... No, no. She'd rather walk, wouldn't you, Miss Piper? Yes. Don't forget to take your rubbers with you, Judge. Better put them on, old boy. What for? It isn't raining. Well, you don't want to take any chances do on the grass, you know. A man can't be too careful at your age. I'll carry them if I so choose. <laughs> Independent as the day he was born. <laughs> All right, Judge. Suit yourself, then. But bon voyage. Good day, Miss Piper. Goodbye, Judge. Don't fall now. Ha! <laughs> Let's wait a minute till he goes, huh, before we start. Well, really, Mr. Gildersleeve, there's no reason for you to chaperone me. It's broad daylight. I can perfectly... I walk. wouldn't think of letting you walk home alone. Well, why not? What could possibly happen to me? The boogeyman. Oh, you say such silly things. I don't care. Maybe we can start now. Let me just peek out and see if the judge is still... <laughs> well, what do you see? He's putting on his rubbers. <laughs> Way. This isn't the way to my house. It's one way. You'll see. We'll get there. Every time you take me a different way. Do you mind? No. Only each one seems to be a little longer. Well, 
That's because I uh, like to walk with you, Joanne. Do you like to walk with me? Why, yes, I enjoy it very much. Hmm. You say you like to walk with me. Why? Why what? Why do you like to walk with me? I don't know. I just enjoy it. Why do you enjoy it? Well, I don't know. I guess it's just because you're different somehow. Oh? How am I different? I don't know. Well, you say I'm different. You must have something in mind. No. You just seem different, that's all. Oh. For one thing, I don't know anyone else who would walk all the way home with me every time the way you do. Has it ever occurred to you, Joanne, that I might have a reason for that? You must be very fond of walking. I am. I'm a great walker. <laughs> You've no idea how I look forward to these little afternoon walks of ours, Joanne. Do you look forward to them? Yes, I do. All week long, while I'm chained to my desk there in the city hall, weighed down by the cares of office, I dream little dreams. You know, I never think of you as the water commissioner somehow. Don't you? How do you think of me? Oh, I don't know. Just as Mr. Gildersleeve, I guess. Leroy's nice uncle. Oh. It must be a terrible responsibility. Being Leroy's uncle? <laughs> no, being water commissioner. Oh, it is. Yes, my mind is seldom off it. As a matter of fact, my friends tell me I drive myself too hard. Well, that's the way it is. When a man has nothing else to live for, he's apt to lose himself in his job. But you always seem to take things so easily. It's a mask I wear. I don't know anyone else who takes time off just to go for walks this way. Time off? That's the way it appears to you, I suppose. Actually, I'm never away from the job. Why, under these very streets, as we stroll along, under these very streets are water mains. Six inch, I believe. And from the mains, pipelines branch off to all the houses. A giant network. Arteries carrying water. The lifeblood of the whole community. All my responsibility. I never thought of that. And down there at the reservoir, there's the pump. Like a great heart beating away. The heart of this whole town. That pump has to be kept going. Charlie Anderson's in charge of that. And I'm in charge of Charlie Anderson. <laughs> Really, I, I don't see how you can sleep nights. I can't. But it isn't the waterworks that keeps me awake. <laughs> do you know what it is, Joanne? Yes, and I'll tell you just what to do for it, because I know what my father does. Eat a bowl of milk toast before you go to bed. It's, it sends him right off to sleep. <laughs> Did I say something? Come along, Joanne. Confound it, I take her home, and what happens? You rock on. Huh? Oh. Hi, Leela. I gotta be getting home to supper. Don't go away now, you hear? I want to talk to you. Well, what does she want? Well, what does it matter? What does anything matter? <laughs> I declare, Frog Martin, you look just like Napoleon retreating from Moscow. Why? Trudging along like that with your chin on your chest. Where's Joanne? I'll show you two walking down. I took her home. Don't tell me you've had a lover's quarrel. Nope. Oh. No quarrels. You just had a date for this evening with some snake in the grass. Who was it? Was it that handsome young Mr. Albright? I didn't give her the satisfaction of asking her. Now, I won't hear a word against Joanne Throckmorton because I think she's just too sweet. Of course, I don't know that I think she's quite the girl for you, but I think she's sweet. Well, she's sweet, but she's just like all the rest. They're all the same. Women are all the same. Oh, now, that's just about the silliest statement I ever heard. I'm not. Well, I'm not talking about you. That's right, Martin. I, I don't want to influence you in any way, of course, but if there's ever any way that I can help, I want you to feel that you can come to me and confide in me. I want you to feel that, Throck Martin. But... <laughs> Oh, thanks, Leela. How is it going, Throckmorton? Are you and Joanne getting anywhere? 
<laughs> Getting anywhere? I mean, how does it stand now? You tell me. I don't know how anything stands. I don't know where I am with her from one minute to the next. Like this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I walk her all the way home, and then I find out she's got a date for the evening with somebody else. Without a word to me. Had you asked her for a date yourself? Well, no, but gosh. You two aren't engaged or anything, are you? Well, not exactly, no. Have you ever proposed to her? Have you ever told her you love her? What do you want to know for? I'm your friend, Throckmorton. Well, no, I guess I haven't come to think of it. Oh, gracious, how can you expect the poor girl to... <laughs> Men are so ridiculous. Well, where's all this intuition you hear so much about? Women are supposed to be able to read your mind. That's the trouble with you men. You think we have nothing better to read. She may be reading somebody else's mind. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Albright's, for instance. Uh, darn him, why doesn't he stick to his banking? I'll tell you what I do, Throckmorton. Of course, maybe you don't want any advice from me. Oh, I do, Leela. You're a woman. Well, women can be sensible, you know. And I believe Joanne, at heart, is a sensible girl. I really do. Oh, she is. Well, I'd go to her and I'd just put my cards on the table. You would? I think it's the only way. I'd say to her, Joanne, I'm offering you the love of an older man. I'm 44 and I... 43. Forty-three, going on forty-four. <laughs> you must be quite frank with us, Rockmartin. She'll respect you for it. Well... I'd say to her, I'm forty-four, and I have a nephew aged twelve, and a niece who's almost as old as you are. But all that I have is yours. You think she might... I think it might settle the whole thing. <laughs> But, Leela, suppose uh, she said no. I've known you for a long time, Throckmorton, and I've never yet known you to take no for an answer. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, George, maybe you're right, Leela. Maybe I've been too timid about the whole thing. St. Hart never won fair lady. Maybe you ought to just march in there and say to her, Joanne, look here, I've got a proposition to make. How could anyone resist? Hmm. The only trouble is it's kind of hard to talk to her about things like that. She's so darned innocent. She's either innocent or she's kidding. We'll hear from the great man again very soon. Right now, a lady is having the usual difficulties with the proprietor of the grocery store, Silent Sam Loudly. It's a fact, lady. Mr. Beaconfold always slept on the kitchen stove. On cold winter nights, his mother had to get out of bed every half hour and baste him. Even then, people said he was half-baked. <laughs> How about my pound of Kraft's parquet margarine? Hey, Kraft's parquet margarine? Certainly. The flavor of fresh spread for bread millions prefer. It's wonderful on rolls, muffins, waffles, and pancakes, too. And Mrs. Clack just bought some parquet. She's a lady who always carries a rose between her teeth. Wears false teeth now. Understand she's switching over to artificial flowers. <laughs> Mr. Loudly, please. One pound of Kraft Parquet Margarine. Oh, yes, it's Kraft Parquet Margarine, one of your best energy foods. Also has 15,000 units of vitamin A in every pound. Hey, did I tell you oh, about I'm in a the... hurry, Mr. Loudly. One pound of Kraft Parquet Margarine. Hey, of course, of course, Parquet, made from products of American farms. It's delicious. Uh, poor Mr. Hurtenhagen insisted on Parquet. Hear about Mr. Hurtenhagen? Drank a glass of pure spring water, and two days later he was dead. Got hit by an eight-wheel fire truck. <laughs> Please, Mr. Lodney. Hey, here you are, lady. One pound of Kraft's Parquet Margarine. Don't delay. Try Parquet today. You'll say hooray for Kraft's Parquet. Parquet, Parquet. Parquet Margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's wonderful. <laughs> Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Again, he is walking Joanne Piper home. But today, full of his plans for a showdown, he has brilliantly managed to make the trip by way of the Summerfield Reservoir. 
a romantic spot, the reservoir, he thinks, and maybe he's right. Here, Joanne. We can sit here on the grass. Nice and warm. I shouldn't stay long, but the water looks so lovely. The reservoir, yeah, it's pretty. I'm the boss of it, you know. I'm the boss of the whole shebang. It's your kingdom. Huh? Oh, yes, that's right. My kingdom. <laughs> it's beautiful. I must go down to the sea again, to the lonely sea in the sky. How's that? And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. That's John Maysfield. Do you like poetry? Do I? I'm crazy about it. Say, Joanne. Poetry and music have a lot in common. I guess so. I never thought much about it. What I was going to rhythm say... Rhythm is so important in both. Why, George, you're right. Rhythm, yes. Yeah. What I was saying... Oh, yes. What was it? Well, about these walks. I wouldn't want you to get the wrong idea. What do you mean? Well, some people might think that just because we're taking these long walks together that um, there's something going on. Why, how perfectly ridiculous. <laughs> yes, isn't it? <laughs> but that just goes to show you how some people are, Joanne, some old busybodies. Oh, who cares about things? That's what I say. I don't think it's anybody's business but mine if I want to go for a walk. Yeah? Or who I go with. Sure. Or if I happen to be madly in love with somebody. Mm, you are? Oh. I just mean it's nobody else's business if I am. Oh, yes. And the other person involved, of course. Oh, yes. Him. Say it. Joanne. I've been reading the most exciting book. It's called And She Be Fair. Have you read it? Well, no, I'm not in the book of the month anymore. What was the name again? And She Be Fair. It's from the Keats quotation, Forever wilt thou love, and she be fair. Oh, a love story, eh? It's about Tchaikovsky and Madame Von Ney. Do you know the story? Uh, Tchaikovsky, the composer? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sure, you know about him and Nadia von Meg? Nadia, oh, you bet. <laughs> well, this, this new book gives a wonderful account of it. To me, it's one of the loveliest relationships I ever read about. Oh, me too. Between a man and a woman, I mean. Why can't all lives be as beautiful as that? Joanne. What? Nothing. <laughs> I must go down to the sea again, to the lonely sea and the sky. Joanne, I know I'm now, I'm no Tchaikovsky, but uh, couldn't we, I mean, couldn't I, well, it wouldn't be the same, of course, but... You mean us? Yes. Couldn't we have a sort of understanding? You mean like Tchaikovsky and... Well, I don't play the piano, of course, but you do. <laughs> We'd have to start by not seeing each other. Well, that's the way you do it. But we'd have to think about each other a great deal. Oh, I do already. And we'd have to write to each other every day. Write? That's what Tchaikovsky did. Well, I thought you knew the story. Oh, I do. I'd forgotten some of the details. <laughs> you write me a letter telling me about your work. Work? Well, I suppose there are some things I could say about it. <laughs> and then I write you a letter. Great. And it might help if every day at some agreed time... How about 8 o'clock? 8 p.m.? All right. At 8 o'clock every evening, we think about each other. Think? The author says in this book, Tchaikovsky's music was really the flowering of their relationship. She was such an inspiration to him. So are you. On the other hand, Tchaikovsky meant everything to her. He had such fire, such nobility of spirit. He was so sensitive, yet so strong. <laughs> doing? How would I know? He's just sitting there thinking. Stop spying on him. I wasn't spying. I was just looking. Maybe he's worried about something. Yeah. If people are worried, they like to be alone sometimes. But on the other hand, why would he want to worry for exactly five minutes at exactly eight o'clock? Search me. He's goofy. <laughs> at first, I thought he wanted to listen to the radio. Truman or somebody. But why should he kick us out of the parlor just for that? He does sometimes. Can't hear any radio. Hey, listen to that. Heck, if he's playing the piano, the five minutes must be up. Yeah, I guess so. Hi, Young. Can we come back now? 
Yes, you can come back. Thank you, children. Well, that's okay. What the heck was the idea? I wanted to be alone and think for a few minutes, that's all. What's that you're trying to play? That old piece of Freddie Martin? Fre <laughs> My dear, Tchaikovsky. Oh, yes. But nobody ever would have heard of it if it hadn't been for the Freddie. The melody is Tchaikovsky's, probably from one of his symphonies. Believe me, he didn't need Freddie Martin. Wish I could play it. Can you play it, Leroy? No, I don't suppose so. Let's see. Four flats? Nah. <laughs> Tchaikovsky, what melodies. Anki, why this sudden craze for Tchaikovsky? It's not a sudden craze. I've always liked the man. Do you know the story of Tchaikovsky's life? Fascinating. You hear about his love affair with Madame, uh, Madame, uh, what's her name? No. Well, they made history. Romeo and Juliet were a couple of pikers alongside of them. Oh, really? What did they do? Well, I don't know exactly, but it was a tremendous love affair, I can tell you that. Musician, you know. I wonder if they've got that book down at the library. What book? It's about Tchaikovsky and this madam, uh, what's her name? By George, I might just run down there. You're certainly overboard for Tchaikovsky. You made me stop playing that Tchaikovsky record. I? What Tchaikovsky record? Have you still got it? Well, sure. Marjorie, uh, could I, could you find it and play it for me, would you? Poor Unky, he's really got it bad. What's that? I didn't say anything. Tchaikovsky. Uh -huh. What is the record? Oh, here it is. The Piano Concerto. Oh, I wish I'd known. I'd have played it at 8 o'clock. Well, tomorrow. <laughs> Listen to those chords. Is that Freddie Martin? No. It's Tchaikovsky. Anybody that could write that, he must have been a bear over the women. He... I'm sorry. We don't seem to have a copy of it in. It's been quite popular. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I didn't have the right title. Oh, yes. Yes, that's the title. And she be fair. It's about Tchaikovsky. That's right. About him and Madame, uh... Madame Von Meck. Madame Von Eve, Eve Goodwin. Well, how are you? Shh, we're in a library. Oh, well, I'm leaving. I haven't got the book I want. Thanks just to say, ma'am. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> you leaving too, Eve? I must say, Throckmorton, I'm a little surprised to find you at the library. Oh, why should you be? Oh, come now. And that book you were after, biography, what's come over you? Well, it's a long story, Eve. If you're not doing anything... I'd love to hear about it. Well, anyway, that's how I got mixed up with... Uh, I mean, that's how I got to see this girl, and... And then this afternoon, we had this idea. What? Well, I... Gosh, I'm glad it's you I'm telling this to. You won't laugh at me. Why should I laugh at you? Well, most people probably wouldn't be able to appreciate it. You're not like some women, Eve. You haven't any axe to grind. Thank you. Well, anyway, this afternoon, she, Joanne, was telling me about this terrific romance between Tchaikovsky and this uh, Madame von Meck. Yes. And the way I've been feeling about Joanne... I mean, gosh, I haven't dared to say boo to her about... Well, you know how it is when she's so young and everything. It isn't like talking to you, Eve. <laughs> you certainly haven't changed, Throckmorton. I've lost three pounds, don't you notice? You have? Took them all off right here. <clears throat> and, well, anyway, I've been scared to say anything to her. And then suddenly we thought how it would be if... Well, if she would be Madame Von Meck and I would be Tchaikovsky. Cute idea? Very. And she said I should write her a couple of letters and kind of box her around for a while and then maybe it'll develop into one of the great relationships, she said. One of the great relationships of history. Well, you know, I'm not terribly musical. I sing a little, of course. But... <laughs> Eve, I thought you'd understand. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. Well, gosh, if you think it's so funny. Oh, it isn't funny. 
Throckmorton, why do you persist in getting mixed up with literary girls? They always get you in trouble. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know the story of Tchaikovsky and Madame von Meck? Certainly. Tell it to me. Well, they had this terrific romance. I don't know every little thing about it. There's just one little thing about it I think you ought to know before you get too excited. What? Well, I think this little encyclopedia will have it, if it's got Tchaikovsky at all. Oh? Here, this ought to give it. Well, I don't see what you're getting at, Eve. This girl is so sweet, so open, and above board. Well, of course. I, I just think maybe her ideas are a little young for you. Now, don't get excited. I don't mean that the way you think. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, here. Tchaikovsky. Born, educated, composed 120. Here it is. For 20 years, he maintained a curiously absorbing relationship with Madame Nadia von Meck, exchanging letters with her. But Tchaikovsky died without ever having seen her face to face. Never met? Never laid eyes on her? Never. Well, by George, she can count me out. <laughs> Musicians. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back again very shortly. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Kraft's Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. Try it soon. Discover for yourself how good Parquet tastes when you spread it on bread, toast, and rolls. It's true. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Kraft's Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. Look first for the margarine of Kraft quality. Parquet Margarine made by Kraft. Don't delay, try Parquet today. You'll say hooray for Kraft's Parquet. Parquet, Parquet. Parquet Margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's wonderful. <laughs> Uh, Sergeant. Yeah? Can you tell me how I enlist in the Foreign Legion? <laughs> uh, sorry, bud, we got a long waiting list. Leave your name and address, we'll get in touch with you. <laughs> the Great Gilbert's Lead is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Nixon. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Shirley Mitchell, and Earl Ross. This is John Lang saying goodnight to the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Hey, Good night, folks. Listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Good night again. Have you tried Papstet? It's a cheese food that's really different. Rich and mellow cheddar cheese flavor, easy to serve in a variety of tempting ways. Pabstet spreads easily for sandwiches and snacks, melts smoothly into rich golden cheese sauces, slices in a distinctive way, for Pabstet can be cut into, into neat wedges when chilled for serving with fruit or pie desserts. Why not buy both varieties of this delicious, nourishing cheese food? Ask for golden cheddar Pabstet or pimento Pabstet. P-A-B-S-T hyphen e double -T, T. Pabstet cheese food. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.